Well, good morning everyone and welcome to our Sunday service. Several weeks ago I received a lovely gift of some eggs and some fruit from an unidentified person or persons. And I can only assume that after much searching that uh, it was someone from the church. I've been trying to find out who that person was and I cannot for the life of me uh, work it out. Uh, I even went and talked to my neighbours and uh, they said no, it wasn't us. So. I'm assuming there are some lovely person or persons out there somewhere who uh, several weeks ago dropped off some eggs and some fruit and so I want to give you my heartfelt thanks for that. <clears throat> it was very, very nice whoever did it and uh, really appreciated uh, that uh, touching gift. So I pray that you will uh, be blessed with this morning's service as we join together in worship, as we hear the word of God uh, and as we listen attentively, attentively to uh, what God is wanting to say to each and every one of us this morning. I want to begin with a word from Psalm 45 and verses 6 and 7. This is speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Amen. So let's pray. Father in heaven, you are sovereign over all the kingdoms of men and give them to whoever you wish. Your dominion is an eternal dominion and your kingdom endures from generation to generation. No one can hold back your hand or say to you, what have you done? And so we bless you and we praise you, giving you honour, the one who lives forever. Your works are true and all your ways are just. And so let's remember your works. Let us meditate on all of these things and consider them well. Cleanse us from all our sinful thoughts and the deeds which we have committed against you and pardon us, we pray. In you, O oh God, we take our refuge. And so let us never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver us. Turn your ear towards us and save us. And so we give you thanks, O oh God, for you are good. Your loving kindness endures forever, as does your unfailing love and your wonderful acts towards the children of men. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to be reading this morning from uh, Romans, the book of Romans, beginning in chapter 8, if you'd like to turn there with your own Bibles at home. And uh, we're going to begin in verse 1. I'm reading from the uh, NIV version, and we're going to start with 1 and go all the way through to verse 16. Beginning in verse 1. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned, condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Verse 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The simple mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of, God, of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, 
He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. Verse 12. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of God. Right, I would like to invite Johnson now to uh, preach on that particular passage. I look forward to hearing what he has to say. Good morning, church. Uh, we want to thank God that um, this is our first week back to church. Uh, I mean the building, church building. And I want to thank um, Chris for the reading, the prayers. Um, my, my theme today is you are God's child. You are God's child. Do you know who you are? <clears throat> That's our theme for today. Do you know who you are? I am thrilled to be able to tell you by the power vested in me as the minister of the gospel who you are. You are a child of God. That's what I want to tell you. You are a child of God. It is a powerful thing when a person discovers who he is or she is. That you are a child of God. Romans 8 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So the Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought you adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Abba Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. You need to know that you are not simply the children of an impersonal universe. You are the child of a loving God who watched over you from day one you were born up to now. So think of what it means to be a child of God. It means, first of all, that God will forever watch over you. There will never come a time when God will never stop loving you. Even if you are prone to wander far, far away from God, God still loves you. Jesus makes it clear in his parable of the lost son in Luke 15. The son's real indictment was not going away from his father. But in the great disrespect, he showed his father. He didn't want to wait until his father was deceased to get his inheritance. He wanted his inheritance now. So this is all, almost the equivalent of saying to his father, I wish you were dead. In the Jewish culture of that day, this would have been unheard of. Despite the boy's swaywardness, however, the father never stopped looking for his son. Through 10, and there was never any question he would welcome his son home. Can't you see him at the door each afternoon, gazing out searching in the horizon? Do you think he will come back? He asks us with both sorrow and hope in his heart. Is he safe? Is he still there? When is he going to come back? Being a child of God is a permanent relationship. We say that our love for our children, if we are so blessed, will never end. Imagine how much love God is capable of. It's so much that John declared one of his epistles, God is love. In 1 John 4, verse 8. Love defines God's very nature. This is such a profound truth. As many of you know, one of the fastest growing Christian movements in this world today is the church in communist China. 
Much of this is due to the tireless efforts of a Chinese Christian teacher named Watchman Ni. Ni once told about a new convert who came in deep distress to see him. No matter how much I pray, said his, this new convert, no matter how hard I try, I simply cannot seem to be faithful to my Lord. I think I'm losing my salvation. With much of his wisdom, Ni pointed to the family dog near and said, do you see this dog? This is my dog. He is a house friend. He never makes a mess. He is obedient. He is pure delight to me. Out in the kitchen I have a son, a babe. He makes a mess. He throws his food around and devours his cloth. He is a total mess. But who is going to inherit my kingdom? Not my dog. My son is my heir. So you are Jesus Christ's heir because it is for you that he died. It is for you that he died. Ni, of course, was referring to our lesson for the day. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Paul writes of our adoption by God, but it is not the kind of adoption we are familiar with. Not only did adoption in Roman society give a child the full rights of a biological child, but because of the vulnerability of the adopted child, the new parents could never abandon that child when they have adopted the child. So it is no extent that Paul would use this kind of extraordinary and unusual image to describe our relation to God. Paul wants to make an important point. Our status as children of God is not normal, or a part of the natural course of things in life. So to become a child of God requires extraordinary and unusual action. The key biblical verse for this doctrine in Romans 8, verse 15 and 16, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and I am a child of God. So they were perpetually responsible for that child from the point of adoption, no wonder Jesus could promise these disciples, I will be with you always. In Matthew 28, verse 20, we are children of God and the Holy Spirit testified to this fact that I am a child of God the moment I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. So the Spirit transforms believers from the spirit of slavery to sons and daughters of God, the spirit of adoption. So for Paul, there is no better evidence for this new familiar status than the believer's cry, which echoes Jesus' own Abba, Father, my own Father. So as children of God, we are heirs of God, beneficiaries of all his powers and resources. Ephesians 1 verse 3. And join heirs with Christ. In many families, children inherit their parents' estate. Each child is an heir, and the children are together are joint heirs. So with all fellow believers, we are joint heirs of all that God has given to us. I am convinced that the biggest problem in many people's lives today is that they do not know who they are. Their true identity is a mystery to them. Do you know who you are? The day you understand that you are a child of God is the day you will learn that true freedom is all about. You know that you own everything because I'm a child of God. My father is rich. Because I'm a child of God. I've got the freedom because I'm a child of God. So you own everything. You are not worried about anything because your father is the owner of the world. So I'm saying the day you start to know that you are a child of God, there are a lot of things that start happening in your life. Today I declare with authority of the gospel of Jesus Christ that you are created in the image of God. That Jesus Christ abides in you and you abide in Christ. And this is where you get your worth. You are worthy because you are created in the image of God. I declare with the authority of the gospel of Jesus Christ that you are every bit as much as child of God as anyone. I declare with the authority of the gospel of Jesus Christ that you will be a fruit of God's vineyard through the power of God that is within you. You cannot do it on your own, but because the power of God is within you, you are able to do it. So the world tells us many, many lies about who we are. The world tells us that we are losers. The world tells us that we are unlovable. The world tells us we are unworthy. The world tells us we are incapable. The world tells us that we are deficient. We are murderers, rapists, adulterers, thieves. 
And before long, we are telling those lies to ourselves. And we believe them. We need to replace those lies with God's truth about us. We are children of the Most High. I am a child of God. And that is very important for me to know. We are loved with an everlasting love that gives us worth and confidence, a sense of purpose in life. We can walk through life with hands held high because of the one who calls us his own. I know who I believe in. I know why I am a Christian. Because God called me. And I, I, I know that I'm even very important because God knows me. He knows the hair in my head. He knows everything about me. There is nothing I can hide from God because I'm a child of God. So we are loved by God. That's one thing we need to know. As we leave this place today, I hope that we will do with a new determination and confidence because of the one who has adopted us as his own children. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, yes, they are children of God. So the Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Do you know who you are? With such adoption comes all the rights, privileges, and honor that belong to the biological children of the parents. Because God has adopted us, we are full his beloved sons and daughters. We get to, to have all the rights and privileges that even Jesus has. Because we are children of God. With the clay of your life and mine is better a person, a more complete person, that the world still has not seen. Not in its perfect fulfillment. We are more than we appear, and one day we will be like Jesus Christ. We'll be just like him. Even if sometimes we have straws dangling from our noses, we we'll never lose sight that we are sons and daughters of God. Never lose sight that you are a child of God. Whatever people may call you, whatever people think about you, you are a child of God. You are very important before God. Don't let people pull you down. You are an important person. VIP. Sitting out there. Maybe the world doesn't know. But God knows. So I just want to urge you and remind you that you are very important before God. Don't lose that. Don't let it go. You are a child of God. And when God calls you, he calls you by name. It's not hidden from him. He knows what you are thinking and what you are doing. So God is, is put, given you that position. He has put you in that position of being a child, an heir of God. An heir of God's things. An heir of this world. So may I just urge you, and remind you continuously to say, be happy. Why? It was a child of God. God bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the love you have given us. We want to thank you that you're always there for us. Even sometimes we wander away, you still follow us. Grant that we may be united to the affection of your love. And well though we may be, glory be to you, God. We are children of God, and we believe in that. Thank you, Father, that you welcomed us. You called us so that we become your own children. So we are not afraid of anything that is happening in the world. For we know that you are in control, you are in charge. Be with us, Father, as we continue to worship you from now and evermore. Amen. I will call Pastor Chris to come and uh, pray for the offerings. God bless you. Amen. Just want to thank everybody for uh, continuing to support the work of this church and uh, the work we do in the community and uh, supporting our Minister Johnson uh, with your offerings and your tithes. And of course, there are many who also give of their time as well. So thank you so much for doing so. Um, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we bow before you with grateful thanks. We thank you that you have invited us to participate in your kingdom work. And Lord, sometimes we underestimate what, what that really means, but it is a privilege and an honour to be able to serve you with our time, with our money and with our resources, because all of these things belong to you. But Lord, we are grateful to be able to give them back to your service so that your kingdom work can continue. So multiply these blessings, we pray, and, uh, and build them up for the work of your kingdom and the work that you're doing in this place. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.